As a first example of computing the deflection of a beam, let's consider a simply supported beam with a point force located right in the center, and we'll assume that EI is constant for this beam. And let's go ahead and try and determine what V of X is for the beam, so the vertical deflection or the transverse deflection of the beam in terms of the applied load and the properties and dimensions given. So uh, we're going to need the equilibrium equation in terms of the deflection, so that's EI v with four derivatives is equal to q. In this case, q is a point force, so it's represented by a delta function. So it's going to be delta located at L over 2 in the beam. And notice that I've gone ahead and written ei with four derivatives on v because I, ei is a constant, so I can pull it outside of the double derivative. The boundary conditions are that we have a pin. So that means that there's no deflection at x equals 0 or x equals L. And because it's a pin, it's free to rotate, so there's no moment at x equals L or x equals 0. So that translates into a condition on the second derivative of the deflection times EI being equal to 0 at both ends of the beam. So we have no deflection at the two ends, and we have that EI, the second derivative of the deflection, is equal to 0 at both ends of the beam. So to proceed, we can first integrate our equilibrium equation once, so the delta function integrates to the step function plus a constant. We can integrate it a second time, and the step function integrates to Macaulay bracket. We integrate the constant, we get an x, and we pick up a second constant of integration, and we're going to keep going. We'll do this one more time, and yet another time. So four integrations produces an expression for v as a function of x, and it's given to us in terms of this uh, polynomial here in x with the Macaulay bracket in the first term. Now there are four constants of integration, c1, 2, 3, and 4, and we'll eliminate those using the boundary conditions. And to do the procedure for elimination, it's a little, it can be uh, helpful to apply the boundary conditions in, in, in an order in which it's easy to determine them one at a time. So that comes to you through a little bit of practice. But we'll go ahead and we'll start with uh, looking at v of 0 equals 0, and that immediately tells me that c4 equals 0. Uh, if I apply the boundary condition of the moment equals 0 at x equals 0, I immediately find out that c2 equals 0. Notice that the, the second integral that one gets is the moment equation, and the, actually the first integral that one gets is the negative of the shear force. So it's important to observe that the equations that you're going to need for applying boundary conditions come to you as part of the step-by-step -step integration process. So let's go ahead and apply the boundary conditions at x equals L. If I go ahead and do that, I'm going to find out that uh, C1 is equal to 0 by noting that at x equals L I have no moment. And if I apply the boundary condition at uh, x equals L for the deflection, I also find out that C3 is equal to minus 5 PL squared over 48. So that's just plugging in the value x equals L into the equation for the moment and the equation for the deflection. So we can put it all together and we have our final relationship that says that V of x is equal to 1 over EI times P times the Macaulay bracket of x minus L over 2 cubed over 6 plus PX cubed over 12 minus 5pl squared x over 48.